guys and welcome back to my channel thanks for tuning in thanks for stopping by i hope you guys are doing well and you're doing okay well i have someone with me here and um, we are talking about something she is mrs onyeka albert she is an educationist she runs a school in festac town charles Lorry french academy Festac is in Lagos, for those of you who do not know. Okay, she is here. So we are talking about something. I want to, well, let's greet her first. Or let's meet her first. Well, Mrs. Albert is, um, apart from the fact that she's an educationist, she's also a parent and uh, a polyglot. Polyglot is someone that speaks so many languages. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Aki, Bubu, and Nyonwao. Ndivai, Ekene Pamun. Or if I'm not believing, no, 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 dear, na OZK TV, OZK TV, yeah, and then, eh, yeruwa, the kuna gida, na tabatara kuna jimu, a OZK TV. Bonjour mes amis, vous êtes à la maison avec nous. Je suis ici à OZK TV. Soyez les bienvenus. Merci beaucoup. Wow. So all the things that she said, uh, you, you understand, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just pick the one that is applicable to you. Well, you know, I want us to look at uh, from an educationist point of view. You're also yeah. a parent um, about this. What young people are doing these days? Remember the young man, Akman. You know that was. Um, they said that he allegedly. Well, he also confessed to raping that young woman at. Um, Apaibam State, right? He lured the young lady with a job offer. The young lady went there and um, we found out that he raped her and sent her to an early grave. She died. Now, we have another one that happened recently, that the one that everybody is talking about, Chidema and um, the other, yes, Sifo. She also did something. She's also a young person. That man is 20, Chidema is 21. So what is causing this thing about our young people being so violent? What is the problem in our society? Um, I want to take it from home. Because the home you come from is your first place of learning before you get to the school. And then the parents are home, in their various homes, these days are missing their responsibility. Because when you have a child, and you begin to expose the child to some things, some information that the child cannot carry. You allow children, this, this time and this time of uh, internet, uh, the world, uh, internet uh, uh, exploration, you see children of just five years, 10 years, their parents are giving them the phone. And when you allow the children to browse into your phone, before you know what's uh, uh, before you know what's happening, they would have deviated from where they are supposed to be. Our parents are supposed to guide what their children see. I had an instance where a child was wearing beads. I asked her, where did you see people wearing beads on their waist? She said, from the film, the home video she was watching. And then I said, your parents allow you to watch home video where aunties and uncles, where the aunties are wearing beads and all that. So when these children are so exposed to things they cannot control, you know, sometimes you have to be the, somebody that can control the information that is given to you. Now, the particular lady that is trending now, from what we hear, from what we read from social media, we are told that she started smoking when she was 11. It's terrible. Terrible. What did the parents do? Well, if you could not, at that age, you should be able to control the child. If you cannot control a child at that age, then there was no need for you to have the child in the first place. But you should, because you should be an adult that should control whatever, because the way your child behaves at home could be, a, I mean, it could be a cause to another person in another, you may say, it doesn't bother me, you have sent your child away at 11, now look at what the child is doing. We learned that this girl started smoking at a young age of 11. Why couldn't the parent, the mother, why couldn't the parents hold her? Did they, the child, see her? But did they see her? But how did they know that she started smoking? That means the parents were not doing their duty. Some parents will go to work, you come back, you don't check your children, even if they have to sleep before, if the children have gone to bed before you came back, you still go and wake them. You wake them because you need to know what was their activities of that day. 
they run, the, run it down and you will not be able to censor. Oh, you did this wasn't good, this wasn't good, this was right. You applaud them. In this sense, a child of 11 smoking, you can't blame that child. That child is still naive. Where did the child learn how to smoke? And if the child has done what you as a parent would have done, in that area, the parents failed in their own responsibility. So are we not saying that this thing, we have, what we are seeing, seeing now is a result of parental failure? Failure. The parents, a lot of our parents, I will tell you, they have their they have their priorities. What about the school? Mistakes. What is the school? You are, you are, you are an educationist. Yes. So what is the role of the school, the school in bringing up a child? The school will always, in fact, the school has a double responsibility. We train, even the parents, we try to tell them, look, this and this you don't say in presence of your child. This and this you don't do in presence of your child. Because whatever you do, if the child comes to the, to the school, the child tries to replicate it. The child tries to communicate to other children. And so because of that, we watch, we tell you to please mind what you do or say in presence of these children. Of course, in the school, the teachers are there. The cleaner, everybody, everybody, Every adult in the school is a teacher. So we monitor what the students do. We monitor, what, we monitor what they say. In fact, we go to the extent of monitoring the food they eat. You understand? So if we can go to that far, sometimes we call them, this and this you are saying. Where did you get? Ah, my mommy used to do this to our house help. My mommy used to say this to our, our auntie who takes care. Like, By like the way, using, I don't like... Like using foul language. language. By the way, I don't subscribe to people calling people house help. Nobody is a house help. These are caregivers. Okay. God has brought them to your house to give care, to care for your children. So I don't subscribe to calling somebody's child house help. How would you feel if your child is called house help? Mm -hmm. So I've, I also tell my parents that I don't like the idea of you calling somebody a house girl or a house help. You're, and everybody can be a help in the house. Mm -hmm. So you, for me, I prefer calling them caregivers. So those foul languages you're using, when you leave your home, the caregivers are supposed to love, show love to your children, will replicate what you do to them. Right? On your children. Okay, so if you don't treat them well, they will just pass it over to the children. Definitely. It's, it, it, is a, it is a garbage in, garbage out. You don't give what you don't have because what you are giving to them is hatred. And so they give it back to your children. I'll, sometimes I tell my parents, if you have three children and you have a caregiver in your house of your child's age, that means you have four children. When you go out to buy things, you come back, those things you bought must be for the four children. You will tell them, they start picking from their age. The one that is caregiver, if he's older than the younger ones, he should take, he or she should take first. But it doesn't happen. <laughs> no, it does happen in some homes. Some of my parents have started, you know, taking to my advice because I'm a social worker. Aside from running the school as a social, of course, you know, running a school is a social work. I also run an NGO, you know, where I, I take care of children, I see children on the street, I remove them, and I see parents on the street, malhand some parents they also malhandle their children, you know, so it all has to do with the individuals, so it, we must first of all work on ourselves, some of our parents are smoke, you go and smoke, those children are peeping, so you are telling them that it's good to smoke, you understand, so even the government says smoking, uh, smokers are liable to, to, die, to die young. So if they are saying that to you, it means the, ch the children to also know. But then you need to also uh, tell them too that smokers are liable to die young. In as much as you are doing this, I'm, I, I want to stop. It's not good. What I'm doing is bad. I don't know how I got to this level. I have to stop. It's bad. By the time you tell the child, the child, it rings bell to the child. The child remembers that my father says, or my mother says, this is bad. I'm doing it, but I don't know how I got into it. I don't know what led me. God forgive me, I'm stopping, I'm going to stop. It's very, very bad. I'm liable to any debt and all that, you know. So that child knows that even when the parent, when he sees the parent, the parents have already condemned themselves by saying what they are doing is wrong. So that child, I, I don't see that child going into that thing because the thing keeps ringing bell yeah. to the child. Mm -hmm. So whatever problem we are having with these kids these days starts from home. You must watch the way you dress as a parent. Sometimes you have some parents, they come to school with bomb shots. Yay. And you now tell them, you are bringing bomb your... Shots. Bomb shots. You bring your children to the school with bomb shots. And then other people's, other children are seeing you. 
what do you think those children are learning? The children will be learning from you. Ah, so so and so person's mother comes with bum shot. Mommy, why can't you come to school with bum shot? Okay. You understand? It, sometimes it, it, it even becomes an yes, issue. Yes, it becomes an issue. The children will tell their mother, Mommy, eh, come with bum shot. But if the if they don't see it, you know, their home and their school are where they get all the information. Most, most, uh, uh, above all, the parents must watch the friends that your children keep. Mm -hmm. These days, we are not allowed to have loose children. In the days of our parents, when we were growing up, our parents left us to mingle with our friends. But these days, you leave your children in your neighbor's house. Sometimes your, your, your neighbor could kidnap your child. We've had issue where a neighbor put a neighbor's son inside a box. A box? Yes. Almost going out with the child until she was stopped. Wow. It was going to do ritual, whatever, with the child. So that's a so neighbor. wicked. It's so wicked. That's what I'm telling you. The world is so wicked mm. now that we have to guide what we eat. We have to guide what we say. We have to guide what we see. There are things you don't watch. There are films. You say, ah, no, no, no. These are not for children of God. You understand? Because the society is so decayed that... You cannot correct the society in the society. The society from home is where we start the correction. You know the society, the home is the minutest exactly. component of the society. So if we're able to work on a society from home and then we move to the school, then we take it out from the school, from the foundational school, that's the primary and the secondary, then we move to the tertiary schools. By the time we get, we finish from primary to secondary, we are big, the children are beginning to form character, they are beginning to form personality, they are beginning to know which is right, which is wrong, because at home they are telling them that this is wrong. In the school we also Depending tell them. The then thing. the friends they keep, yes. again, parents, there are some parents who don't even care. You come back home, you don't even know where your children have been to. I, see, I tell my children in the school that I don't like you visiting your, your classmates. I don't like them going to each other's home, unless they are guided by their parents. Maybe a parent takes another child to another child's home, takes her children to another a child's home, probably their school, and the two parents are there to guide them. In a, they just play for a few hours and then you take them back. But for you to just allow your child to walk out from your house and go to his or her classmate's house is a terrible thing. That means that child is loose. Between your house and the friend's house, something can happen exactly. on the road that you will not know, that the other party will also not know. So because of that, we need to, this time around, it's bumper to bumper. And that's why we are saying we should have number of children we can take care of. Because we, the parents, also need to take care of ourselves. So if you are not well, if you don't take good care of yourself, you cannot take care of those children. You need to live for your children. If you are not living well, the children will not live well. So we need to take the much we can chew, we take. You don't take because others have had 10 children, you want to have 10 children. You may not have as much strength as those people have. So because of that, let us look inwards. Let us search ourselves. Is it good we have children we cannot train or we remain without children? Nobody is praying to remain without children. Or we just have those, the number we can take good care of so that we produce a good society. The society, everybody should know, starts from the home. The family is the minutest component of the society. And if we can get it right from the family, the society will be better for it. Exactly. Thank you so much. And you know that when you give birth to a child, nobody gives birth to a child and says, this child will be an ally. This one will be a troublemaker. This one will be a kidnapper. Sure. This one will be a bandit. Sure. When you give birth to a child, they all look so innocent. Yes. Now, if we understand now that it is from the home. It is how you take care of these children that they grow into whatever it is that they will become. Sure. Because you wouldn't want... Look at babies. All of them, they look so beautiful. No, Have you ever seen an ugly baby? No. I've never seen an ugly baby. They no. always look so You're beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Very innocent. They make you very so happy. Innocent. So it is, as they are growing up, they start imbibing all these things. Yes. They start looking at people. Sure. Becoming so violent. Yes. I don't and, see why and, a 20-year-old, a 21-year-old will become so violent as to... Still a take, child. Take, they will steal children. They will, they will, they will Have start... Have the mind to use you, knife to look at somebody. Eh, knife. Very even much at older home. than them. Even at home. The children yeah. are only uh, exposed to knowing that the knife is used to cut vegetable cut oranges, exactly. cut fruits, mm -hmm. cut uh, yam, and all that. You, 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 if by mistake, the there thing, is a cut, the, you, 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 it's you, so, everybody's scared. So at what point, at what point did we get it wrong? Someone? 
We have to see parents. We have to do something. We have to do something. We have, we have to because if we've, we've had parents lose knife on their spouses, that is terrible. And the children are there watching, watching. So what it's, child are you bringing out? I know you are fighting. fighting with your husband. You are fighting with your wife. You are exchanging blows. Children are there are watching you. I mean, you are not even is, supposed to use any object. I've always told people. When you have a, a disagreement with your spouses, the best you can do is to walk out. Walk out, get somewhere, chill out, and then come back and, and, sort, it and out. sort it out. But at that particular time, exactly. you guys are all hot. Yes, you, know, you are charged. feeling so charged. You are feeling as if one person should leave this planet for the other. But the best if you realize that when you harm anybody, you harm yourself. Exactly. If you if you let, if you send somebody to an early grave, are you going to remain? For what? You are going to be there. The law will catch up with you. The law will catch yes, up with you. Take care of you. And so that early grave waits there for you. So if you have that at the back of your mind, if I love, I love myself so much, oh. I cannot hurt you. If I hurt you, that is the prison waiting for me. Oh. I love my freedom. So who will take care of your children? I love for my you? air. I love everything around me. So the love, and that's another thing. Self -love. Parents, parents should preach love. If we, we don't love, it's like we don't really have much we don't of have it. love again if you preach love for one another sometimes you see children parents uh, have sisters have brothers the parents say no because you are not the same mother yeah. it's not your brother because you are not the same father it's not yours what are we, we are, what are what are we dragging that is why we have we, that is why we are having what we are having that's now. why we have this problem because hatred is more in the society now than oh. love Let's begin to preach love. Exactly. If there is love, love will conquer everything. Love. If there is love, you will not want to hurt a fellow human being. When you are eating, what if your sister asks you to give, you give the sister because your stomach is half full, but your sister's stomach is empty. Why don't you share with your sister? When we begin to share with one another, share with one another. we begin to it's love not like one he's another. He's Yoruba, he's Aosa, he, he's Igbo. He no, I speak five. I speak three major Nigerian languages. Exactly. If you call me, I speak Igbo. The first day I met um, uh, Ambode, Ambode called us to to meet the incoming governor. I stood up. I greeted in Igbo. I greeted in Yoruba. I greeted in Hausa. I, I everybody was the ovation was so high yes. because I told them. I come from Nigeria, and that's where I come from. <laughs> if you ask me you where you, I'm just I'm just a Nigerian. You, I cannot differentiate because look at me. I eat Yoruba food very well. In fact, my best food is Amala. I eat Igbo food. My best soup in Igbo is Onubu soup. I eat Aousa. Masa is my best snack. So tell me, why should I not come from all this? I'm just you a see? Nigerian. I'm just proud so to be a Nigerian. Let us preach love. Let's you preach know, love. Like you said. Thank you so much for coming. You know, I hope that when next you call or you, you would come here and talk to our people. I will. Yes. I will from I will. time to time. Yes. You know, because you because I'm an live. advocate of a peaceful society. Yes. I'm an advocate yes. of a loving society. So speak, uh, you know, tell them about it now. Okay. I okay. <laughs> Eja funra, eja love arawa abi, eja fena arawa. En er yero wamu da anla mu mu na so muso juna muso juna da anla muzama guda muso juna. Ndi ba in kai love vonu kai funu wai na nya kai fai na zo kai fai na zo. Biko let's have peace in our country. Let's love one another above all. I'm, I'm passionately begging Nigerians, please, please, let's love one another. Yes. Thank you, Ozike, for inviting you, me. You're welcome. You didn't tell them in French. Okay. Uh, uh, mes amis, nous sommes ici. Il faut qu'il y aura amour. Il faut qu'il y aura amour partout. Il faut qu'il y aura amour partout, s'il vous plaît. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> well, my own is, you know, it's English. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I'll she will come in again next time. Yes. I'll see you next time. Please stay safe. Bye. And be a true Nigerian. Yes, true Nigerian. <laughs>